Hello and welcome back. So for today's video, I'm going to remake one of my most popular video about particle animation. But this time we're going to use simulation modes. All right, so let's get right into it. Okay, so we've got a new Blender file here. We're going to quickly go to the geometry nodes tab and click on new. I'm going to disconnect the default cube because why not? And let's bring in a UV sphere. So let's connect that to our geometry output. But for our particle animation, we are going to need particles. So let's distribute some points onto this UV sphere here. So I'm going to use distribute points on faces node and let's connect this to group output and we get a bunch of points. So I'm going to increase the density of the point for about 100. And like I said, we're going to use simulation nodes. Bring in our simulation zone. And I'm going to plug this right into the simulation input. And let's take this output and plug it into the group output. I will add a join geometry because these are not enough for our animation. We want the points to be created constantly. So for that, we're going to take the original mesh and then join it every frame to the mesh that we already have. And then we'll get, we get a bunch of points, you can say that. And currently you don't see it. That's because the points are all getting created at the same location. But if you look at it, the point count here keeps increasing. To see how the points are getting created, and we, we essentially don't want them to be created in one location every time. So I'll take this seed and I will add a frame output. Here. So what will happen is every frame whenever a point is getting created, it's going to get created in a different location. So now if you see the entire sphere is getting covered in a few frames itself. I also don't want the density of the points that are getting created to be constant. I want it to be randomly distributed. If I just take this and search for random, it's going to give me something like this. I want it to be random somewhere between 100 and let's say 300. I want it to change the randomness every frame. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug this into the seed. And now if I play it, it is randomly creating point in different locations. And then it's also changing the density of points that are getting created. All right. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to start displacing these points a little bit because I don't know if you have watched the original video. If not, it dynamically distributes the point to create an abstract animation there. Let's try and do something like that. And for that, I'm going to use a set position node and let's put this right in here. And I think the best node that we have to create dynamic distribution is noise texture. So I'm going to take the noise texture and plug it into the color section of it. Let's search for color. So if I play it right now, it's going to go crazy and uh, all the points are going to fly away somewhere. And that's because noise texture here is getting calculated from zero to one. And that doesn't really work correctly for vectors. So in order to fix that, what we need to do is we need to subtract this value by 0.5. Let's take this vector and put it in the offset and let's try it again. And now if you see the points are not getting crazy, but yeah, this doesn't look that great. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce the detail here. Let's bring down the amount of noise as well to once. But if you look at it, the noise pattern doesn't change. It is constantly the same thing and it just looks like the particle are just moving in a set direction. So let's also bring in a little bit more dynamic pattern distribution in noise. And for that, what we can do is we can actually change it from 3D to 4D. And then we've got this option here that says W. What we can do is we can take the second output from the same time and just plug it in to the W. And as soon as I do that, can you see now the noise pattern is a little bit more dynamic. It's changing every second. But for me, it's a little too much. So let's change that. So what I'll do is like instead of taking seconds, I'm going to take frame. But I will also add a math node here and reduce the intensity of it just by changing it to multiply and let's bring it down by 0 0.02. And now if you look at it, it's a little bit more stable compared to what it was before because it again doesn't look a lot much because there are a lot of particles that are just floating around here and we've got to do something about it. What I want to do is I want to make sure that if the particle has moved a certain distance from the center of the sphere that we're using as a base mesh, I want them to get smaller and smaller and maybe eventually get deleted as well. So how do I do that? Well, if it moves away from the center of the sphere, I want it to get smaller. So how do I find what the center of the sphere is? Well, just by finding the position of the sphere. So I'm going to take the position and then 
find the length from the position. So basically, if you use a length node right after the position node, it's going to give you the distance of the each particle from the center of the sphere. You're going to take this and maybe use a map range. And we'll have to reverse it though, because like currently it it's going to give you a value that will be from the center to away from the center and it's going to keep increasing right as the distance increases but we want to find a value that will decrease the farther you go away just so that it can be applied to the scale so that the scale is decreasing as well hopefully that that makes sense now that we know the distance between that and we have mapped it to a range we can add a set point radius node here and we're going to take this result and plug this right in here if i play this again can you see everything is just stopping immediately and that's not what we want so let's increase from max to let's say about 10 let's go back and uh, it's particles are way big now let's make it smaller as well so i'm gonna change the value to 0 0.1 Let's try again. All right. Now, the amount of particles that are getting created, and as soon as they reach a certain distance, if you see the size of those particles are reducing smaller and smaller. But there's still one big problem here. If you look at it over here, the number of points that are there in the system are still equal to what they were originally. It just keeps increasing. So, we need to find a way to delete them as well when they have reached a certain scale. What we can do in this is that since we know that we the particles are going to get very very small or infinitely small after they reach a certain distance from the center of the sphere i also want them to get deleted once they reach that amount so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this and i'm going to add it less than or equal to and then we can add a value of 0 0.001 and then what we can do is we can add a delete geometry mode but this right before we are displacing the particles and take the results and plug it in right here. All right, so now if you see the number of particles are not increasing for more than 200,000. So what, what happens is as soon as the particle reaches a certain distance from the center of the sphere, it automatically gets deleted. Now, I think there is just one more thing that we can do to make this animation a little bit more interesting. Now, if you look at it, the particles are moving at a set speed and we can also maybe try and add a little bit more acceleration to it we can basically take this position go ahead and add a scale to it just so that we can control the intensity of it and then we can simply just add that position into our original calculation of displacement and let's plug this in and change it to add let's see what we get now all right now i think we're getting something really weird let's fix that real quick so let's bring this down to 0 0.05 and if you see the particles in the center are moving a little bit slower compared to the ones that towards the end of it but there's another big problem that we see here is is that the particles are all getting deleted at, at a certain spherical radius like for example if everything is getting deleted at this radius immediately and that's not what we want we want it to get deleted randomly so what we can do is we can take this from max value in a map range and just add a random value node to it and let's plug this in to delete the particles somewhere randomly between 5 and 10 as a value and we can again take the frame and plug this into the scene and that just basically is going to give it a little bit more randomness. So now if you look at it, it, it is a little bit more organic than what it was before. Let's add an instance to what we have created already, right? Like for example, if I try and render it out right now, it's going to go blank because these are all points and not, not really geometry. So what we can do is we can take this simulation output and search for instance on the point. So that's the one. Let's plug this in and practically we're gonna delete everything, but that's because we have not added an instance yet. So let's go, let's search for UV sphere again. That's it. Now, all the spheres are massive. If you remember, what we did is we calculated the size of the particles, the basis of the distance of those particles from the center of the sphere. So, what we can do is that since we plugged that value into the radius of the particle, we can just bring in radius and just plug that in to the scale. As soon as I do that, it automatically scales them down to what our particles were looking like originally so now that we have instance the sphere onto it i think we should also just reduce the resolution here right because these many segments and rings is, is just going to slow down so i'm going to go ahead and change the resolution to three on both ends and also maybe reduce the radius to 0 0.5 or i think that's too small let's increase it to 0 0.9 and i think this looks 
Okay, let's also add a little bit more randomization to the rotation because you see everything is just rotated in one direction and that doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to take the rotation value and add a random value node again. So I'm going to add a value of 6.283. I think that's what it translates into 360 degrees in radians. Take this same time node, duplicate it, and let's plug the frame of it into this as well. Let's see if we can get more randomization because of that. Or maybe we can just use the seconds. So we gonna bring scale instances let's put this in and we can just duplicate this random node change it to flow and plug this into the scale i want to scale it so much though so i'm gonna scale it somewhere between 0 0.8 to 1 and let's plug in the seconds here as well and we think we're good i still think the center of the sphere is a little bit bigger than what i want it to be so i'm gonna go ahead and reduce it to let's say half of its size and i'm also going to reduce the segments of it so on this one so, all right looks like it's pretty much close to the animation that we created in the original one so let's quickly go ahead and create a simplistic material for this this is the material that's already created now let me assign that material to my my geometry so set material node and let's bring this material in. I'm going to make it metallic, increase the specularity to one. And I think the roughness is fine. But let's also bring down the value here to like about 0 0.6. And I'm going to go to the render section here and uh, let's bring down the world strength to zero. Let's also go to the render, click on ambient inclusion, bloom and screen space reflections. And also, light to increase the contrast too. and i think we need a little bit more light here to be able to see what exactly is happening we already have one light so i'm going to change it to an area light and scale it up a lot and let's remove the let's bring it to the center and remove any kind of rotation that it has so that it's directly pointing down let's bring it up a little bit more so we have a little more space I'm going to duplicate it and bring this down right at the bottom. This I want similar light to be coming from the bottom as well, and just would rotate it by 180 degrees on the x-axis. I would also like to have a light at the center that's just basically giving it a different look. So let's bring in a point light uh, at the center of the frame, increase the power to 500, so we're seeing something, and I'm gonna make it maybe reddish, and that looks good. Let's also increase the radius to maybe 0 0.2, so the light is a little bit more spread out, and let's see how it looks like. All right, it's looking good. I think there's one other thing that we can add in this is that we can go to composition, click on use notes, and then we can add a glare, and let's change it from streaks to fog glow and change this to pi and mix and maybe i'll add 0 0.2 here and if i render it out now let's see how it looks like okay this is looking good although the camera angle i'm not a fan of it so i'm gonna maybe for a different one and let's bring this here bring this to the center and i'm gonna change the resolution from 10 8 19 20 so, th so that i can make it into a vertical video or a vertical animation basically and then i can go to the camera settings change it from perspective to orthographic i think that works a little bit better for me and i'm gonna keep it at 12 and let's also add a little bit of depth of fields that makes it a lot more cooler so let's see where exactly are the particles looking sharp so i think this is way better so let's yeah i think i think we're good here that's about it for the overall animation this is how we're going to create it back into blender using simulation node so i really hope you liked it if you did please do like share and subscribe i'm going to see you in the next one